Okay, first bar fingering suggestion for your plucking hand, thumb only on the G. Um, I prefer using I and A for the, uh, the second, third and fourth pair of notes, okay? Um, it's good to get into the habit of using your I and A finger on this kind of thing, even if it means dropping the I finger onto the fourth string, I feel that's better than using the thumb on both the sixth string and the fourth string. So, yeah, practice with I and A on those two note chords. Um, it also leaves the open G at the end of bars one and two for your middle finger. Uh, timing is probably the one of the big challenges in this piece. Jumping from 4-4 four, four to 3-8 to 2-4, etc. Um, I think for the 3-8 for the section, I'm, I still, in my mind, am feeling uh, kind of crotchets rather than dotted crotchets. So I'm feeling like... You see there, so I'm not really feeling it as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I mean, yeah, it's a mix there, but I think I, I feel like if you have a, if you feel the 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 crotchets moving through that passage, then you can far easily, far far more easier fit into the two four bar. Um, the other thing you can do, I think people will find it a, a struggle to count properly between say bar th twelve and thirteen, the dotted crotchet to the two four bar. One, two, three, one, two, and. Um, I just, I, I kind of fill the blank there, which is two quavers of, of nothing as that chord rings on. Two, three. Two, three. Now, if you can feel that in your mind, I often find myself breathing that too, going. Now, of course, you don't want that to be loud. You don't want to be sniffing all over the place like that, but. Um, that can really help. Uh, obviously keep on the bass notes on that figure. The third finger there. First finger, first finger. Keep them on for the full bar. Um, bar 21, you've got either the choice of a barret that comes off or an open D and a half barre. I think the, th the problem I find with the half barre and the open D, it's very easy for that barre to block off the full string. I've done that a few times. So, personally, if you can do the, the, the five string barre and play the D uh, under the first finger in bar 21, I would do that. And it comes off on that rest. Twenty-six. I'm taking off the bass note slightly early so we don't get this sound. In, in a pianissimo section, you really don't want that. I'm not a big. Um, I, I don't bother that much with blocking off strings. Uh, There's a squeak sound. I don't mind it that much, but in this section, it really does matter. I think. So I'm, I'm just gently taking it on and off just before I meant to shift. You don't have to take off the fourth finger because of course there's no big sound on the treble strings when you're sliding so... I like to do a little rip into bar 33 just because we're changing the, the theme and Changing the time signature helps to kind of boost it in with a bit of a slowdown. Don't forget your subito piano in bar 36. I think the most common thing I find with nearly all grades with my students is, um, you know, 
I need to constantly say, no, 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 piano here or forte here. Dynamically, we need to really um, practice that as much as we do the notes. I think part of the problem with this is, is that we kind of, we learn a piece by crunching the notes, i.e. getting it all down. And then we try and add dynamics on as a kind of, as an afterthought towards the end when we're, when we're preparing our performance. But we have to practice with dynamics from the start. So don't play the first section forte, don't do it. Like just keep it piano the whole way and get used to it because it's different. It's, and it's, it's difficult playing very piano, it's difficult playing forte. Um, so we, we should practice these sections exactly as they are intended to be dynamically. So going from bar 34 with, with forte, <laughs> It's, it's meant to be a big, big change. These uh, crescendo diminuendos in bar three and nine, no, three and seven and etc. They're very subtle. Don't try and um, force them out because we can't. We the 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 very nature of the be subtle. Um, I think that's it for this piece. Uh, yeah, going back to that timing thing with 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 the three eight bit, we can't really put a metronome on that because we struggle to to hear it over three eight. I'll show you what I mean. If I put a metronome on ninety two, uh, like this. So if I'm playing from the 3-8 section, it's quite hard to fit that in, <laughs> you see, to, to feel that against the beat. I know I was saying earlier that I do, I almost feel that beat through the 3-8 section. But um, if you're playing with a metronome, be careful there because it's easy to to, to distort the the timing. Um, above all, I think the thing that helps most for me is counting those two quaver um, that two quaver gap in between bar twelve and thirteen, two three, and then on on, on the two far two four bar really do make sure you emphasise the the crotchet nature of those. Bar, bar. Thanks.